This video series is based on the Day of Atonement magazine. Link in the description below. Before we look at the Day of Atonement, let's have a look at the feasts so that we can understand how they work. There are two sets of feasts, the Spring Feast and the Fall Feast. Each set has three different feasts. Let's look at the Spring Feast. The first one is called the Passover. In the fourteenth day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. So what does the Passover represent? For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. So here we see that Jesus Christ is that Passover lamb that was slain for our sins. Let's have a look at the next feast called the Wave Sheaf of First Fruits. Then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest, and he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. So what is this wave sheaf of first fruits that's waved after the Sabbath? We can find that it is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Let's have a look at the next feast called the Feast of Weeks, which takes place 50 days after the Feast of First Fruits. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering. Seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number fifty days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. So if we count fifty days from the resurrection of Christ, we come to Pentecost. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Here we can see that the spring feasts point towards Christ's first coming his death, his resurrection, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon his followers. The spring feasts have to do with his first coming, and the fall feasts have to do with his second coming. Let's have a look at the Day of Atonement. We find in Leviticus 16 the story of the Day of Atonement. Let's look at each character and break them down. Let's start with the High Priest. For on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you, to cleanse you, that ye may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. We can find that this high priest represents Christ. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God. Let's now look at the golden censer. And he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from off the altar before the Lord, and his hands full of sweet incense beaten small, and bring it within the veil. And he shall put the incense upon the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony, that he die not. We can find in Psalms that incense symbolizes prayer. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense. Also in Revelation. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. Let's look at the bowl now. And Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and make an atonement for himself and for his house. Who is the family of Jesus the high priest? Jesus gives us an answer in Luke. Thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to see thee. And he answered and said unto them, My mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and do it. So the bull represents those that believe and follow the word of God. Let's have a look at the goat now. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering, that is, for the people. To understand who the people represent, we must understand the outer court, for this is where the people are allowed to be. And when they go forth into the utter court, even into the utter court to the people, they shall put off their garments wherein they ministered, and lay them in the holy chambers, and they shall put on other garments, and they shall not sanctify the people with their garments. Now if we look at Revelation, we find that it refers to the outer court as the Gentiles. 
But the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. So here we find that the goat represents unbelievers, Gentiles. And just to make sure, let's have a look at another text in Isaiah that God refers to Egypt, unbelievers, as the people. Whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people, and Assyria, the work of my hands, and Israel, mine inheritance. So let's do a quick review. We saw that the high priest represents Christ, and that the censer with its incense represents the prayers. We see that the bull represents the family of the high priest, which is Christ's house, which is his people that hear and do his word. We saw that the goat represents the people, which are the Gentiles, unbelievers. Let's have a look now at the sequence of events for the Day of Atonement. And he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from off the altar before the Lord, and his hands full of sweet incense beaten small, and bring it within the veil. And he shall put the incense upon the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony, that he die not. And Aaron shall bring the bullock of the sin offering which is for himself, and shall make an atonement for himself and for his house, and shall kill the bullock of the sin offering which is for himself. And he shall take of the blood of the bullock, and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward. And before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle of the blood with his finger seven times. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering, that is for the people, and bring his blood within the veil, and do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock, and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. And he shall go out unto the altar that is before the Lord, and make an atonement for it, and shall take of the blood of the bullock and of the blood of the goat, and put it upon the horns of the altar round about. And he shall sprinkle of the blood upon it with his finger seven times, and cleanse it, and hallow it from the uncleanness of the children of Israel. 